Brett, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you doing? I'm great, congratulations on the film. Uh, you assembled so many amazing visuals and have David Bowie as the narrator of this film. Talk a little bit about your experience in pulling together all these incredible materials for the film. Well, this was an incredible experience. Um, in 2016, the David Bowie estate granted me permission and Final Cut, miraculously, to um, access everything in their archives. And we took that archive and we went out around the world for the following five years and we grabbed everything, all other known media. And so for the past five, six years, I have immersed myself on a daily basis in the world of David Bowie. So David Bowie is such an incredible artist, but he's also a major cultural figure. Tell us, after doing all this research, how you see David Bowie's impact. Well, David Bowie came into my life when I was entering puberty. Well, I don't know what came first, puberty or Bowie, but they both had a profound impact on transforming everything I knew about the world. Um, and I think for a lot of people, he sort of served that role as a sort of rite of passage. He sort of enters our life at the point that we start sort of our conscious starts opening up and we start curating our own art. In fact, David was the first artist who I purchased a record on that wasn't my parents. And so he had such a, a, a critical role in helping me understand that my differences were my strengths. Um, and, and there weren't a lot of people in 1981 that were sort of sending those signals out to me. And he made me feel and all of us feel that we weren't alone. And if that was all he contributed to my life, that would have been enough. But then at the age of 47, he re-entered my life. And at that time, I was a workaholic. I was, uh, I never really grew up. I was kind of a man child. And suddenly I, I met not uh, the Bowie of my youth, but a Bowie who was um, providing me with a kind of roadmap for how I could lead a more balanced and fulfilled life. Um, I watched every frame in existence on David Bowie. And um, if he's otherworldly, it's, I can tell you that after looking at every frame, I never saw an unblemished moment in front of a camera. He was so intelligent and so present. And even when he was speaking to a daft reporter, and I would start cringing going, oh, this person has done the work, they don't really know who he is. He would view each moment as an opportunity for exchange. He understood from the very beginning the brevity of our time on this earth, and he wanted to have the most adventurous life possible. And really what it is, is a curiosity. Yeah, yeah. So what is it that you found uh, in your research that most surprised you about David Bowie? I, well, I think the thing that was most surprising was that he wasn't cold and icy and distant that he was actually warm and funny and generous. Obviously, I knew he was intelligent. I didn't realize the, the extent of it, which kind of sounds weird, but um, I never really looked at interviews before I started making the film. Um, and really, as I sit back and reflect upon the, the seven-year journey I've had with David, I guess my biggest takeaway is that most of us go through life trying to amass certain success and security. And if we think about rock stars in particular, or entertainers, you know, they build up these brands and they protect them. And nobody wants to risk alienating their audience and not having anyone there to, to applaud. Whenever David arrived at a point where he felt comfortable, he had to blow it up. And if the audience wanted to come along with him, that was great. But he had to satisfy his own creative itch. And again, thinking about the you know, rock and rollers of the last 40 years, I can't think of anyone who had that sort of orientation. He was very much like an explorer. You know, I think one of the great explorers of the 20th century, he was just an explorer of the imagination.